Hello everyone, my name is Scotty, and today I'm going to fill this page of my sketchbook using a few references and this Pentel Pigment brush pen. I'll use some other pens with it. Um, if you saw my last video, I filled out two pages, so this time I'm just going to be doing the one. If you can follow along, that would be awesome. And let's see how we go. Okay, I'm going to start in the bottom corner here with this first reference. This is an extra fine tip, by the way, which I haven't used before. Okay, start with the top. I'm trying to get that silhouette. started to do the details but I decided that I better go into just blocking out the shapes stroke it makes a really nice dry effect so camera strap down here okay and then I make a few more dry effects for his arms very nice to get the shadows. Okay, I'm just thinking maybe this is a bit off this angle. Put the face in and then after that I can edit the, the shape of the face and the, the neck. So the eyebrows about there. Okay, so halfway between the chin and the brow is where the bottom of the nose is. Much easier with this finer tip. So I like to do the split between the lip as the main line here and then depending on the reference depends how much lip I put in. This guy has a very faint lip on the bottom, so just a little line, but then he has a little goatee bit of hair there. Alright, so I'll move up to the eye here, so I'm looking at that angle from here to that point here. Sorry if it sounds a bit vague. Hard to concentrate and talk, but I really think it's more valuable if I say things as I talk, as I sketch. Okay, I just got you in a bit closer there so you can see. Uh, now I'll add in the the iris. slowly, 
but this is a point which could really hurt the whole sketch if I get it wrong. Okay, I'll leave it like that. And about the width of the eye, start the next eye. So I think I got the eyebrow wrong there. Just above the tip of the nose and equal with that eye. The next iris. It looks like he's looking up. So I got that, I can adjust that quite a bit. Hopefully people don't notice so much. So I'll readjust this. So because the whole face went a bit to the right, now the shoulder's a bit out. So these are the kind of things I do to help fix the sketch up. Because I'm doing so, because I'm sketching so freely, there has to be a way of me being able to fix it as I go. Maybe if I put some background behind his head, you won't notice those lines I've done there. All right, now I want to do the glasses. Crosses the eye just here. Okay, so straight in. out to the beanie. Just some really thin lines. Really easy with this, this pen. Some more details. Let's have a look at the reference.
see which bits I've missed. If there's any dark areas which I can add. Sometimes I have to just leave it and move on to something else. Okay, now I'm going to change from this pen to do some washers. So I've filled this with two drops of ink. Let's see how it goes. In my last sketch, I used the normal dye-based ink, and so that meant that when I did this part, the ink bled right into all this line work, all these um, wash shadows. But this, this new pigment brush pen ink does not, which is really good. So I put some broad strokes there. It's so good, I can rub quite hard. And it doesn't bleed. And a few people have mentioned in the comments that they like to layer with these kind of brushes. So I might let it dry a bit and try again to see if I can layer up a bit. Okay. Now I'm thinking to make it stand out, the hoodie could be a bit darker. So bring out the grey brush pen, which I have not liked in the past, but I'm starting to like it for this kind of thing. So what I'm going to do, so I can still see my line work. This is why it's great to have all your pens in a little tray next to you because sometimes you can make some random changes. I didn't plan to use this one. Get some more ink. bleed.
a grey again to add some zippo texture. Maybe because it's grey it might be good to do some fading out of the moustache and a little beard bit. dark in there. And the tip of the nose at the bottom. Gonna go add some no, pencil here. It's probably a bit wet. Yeah. Six P. Okay, now I'm starting a this reference the whole figure from the top to the bottom. Trying to work out how small the head needs to be if I can fit it in. Okay. So I'm going to try some really quick gestures. space there that I look at and it helps me do this really quick. Shoulder. Okay, what's this shape of her top there? It's good practice. You do this enough times and you kind of get it Approximate position because I'm flicking my eyes up to the reference quickly and then I'm looking back down to compare and it took me a couple of years to get that where I'm happy with how I can draw I'm not saying it's going to take you a couple of years but it does take a little bit of time not joining them all up with the hand because I'm not an expert at hands and the more I do the worse it looks so I tend to try to get away with as little as possible. Oh, I was about to draw the skirt here but actually you can see the finger. That's where the skirt line is. About the same size. Okay so let's see the flow here the thigh comes there
just comparing the distance to the hand. I won't get this perfect. So a little bit of ribbon material. Okay. So the leg hits about here before it hits the edge. Quick gesture line there. Starting to just hope that I've got this right. I don't have a lot of practice in drawing full length bodies like this. So compare the two shoes. skirt is about there. I'm going to block that in just to make it very obvious that it's the back. here as I went down. Now they can see that the space here is actually a bit wrong so let's move that there and I think it looks better with a lower shoulder. Okay going into the face. I'll make the eyebrows thicker later. Just putting them there, halfway between the brow and the chin again. To the left corner and the right corner. She's smiling in the corners. going up so I add a bit there and hit the curve make the curve 
from around. And this is all here. Okay, now to the I'll just add this. of the eyes. So that's the inner corner of the eye and then this is the outer corner and I'm now going along the top eyelid to link them. Especially with brush pens, because you can't rub it out. So I'm trying to leave a little bit of light there, because this tip is so fine, I can do it if I've got steady hands. And a little bit of a hint of the bottom but not too much. I might use the wash to do the shadow under the eye. So the top of the ear actually is a bit further down. Should end a bit here, but it's okay. And the neck is a little bit thinner. If I look down from the eye and the nose, the mouth, say about here. So in my faster videos, I usually cut out a lot of this fine tuning. So if you're still here watching this, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too tedious. I could add some more detail into the fingers. so quickly they're just supposed to be a reference to the fingers but people don't if I do it so quickly like that hopefully people don't look at them so much I focus on the face I was thinking about it and I've decided to wash the whole clothes one colour. Choose the grey. Oh no, it's not grey. Tricked me.
little shadow under the eye that I mentioned before. The nose. So I'm still a bit unsure if I want to do little bits that are a bit more softer. I'm always feeling like I need my 2H pencil. Strathmore's um, the hardbound mixed media pad. It's worked a lot better than the other paper I was using for a while because I can actually layer up and not have the whole thing bend and bow. Okay, I'm going to draw this next reference in this section here and have the hair flowing down here. I think that would be a nice nice composition okay so a little bit lower than that hat now that the ink is starting to fade out of the out of the tip here so it's actually good because I can make nice construction lines so how big I want the hair to be and then the forehead Imagine a circle here. shape of the hand this nice sleeve in there okay the arm bends back Not sure if that was the right thing to do there with the shading. I'll move on and see how it goes. So now the eyebrows. So this is my first eyebrow there, and then I can start thinking where the other parts of the face go. Just looking at the overall shape and seeing if that fits. Now, I go to the mouth. Get the top and the bottom. Get 
very simple. So there's a bit of a shadow under that bottom lip. Okay. So now looking at the corner of the mouth, the neck's actually about there. based off the other points I can go across the width of the nose look at that and then the same angle to the other corner of the eye and then going this way another eye width so draw that bridge of the nose and I know the corner will just be behind it about there and then the last corner now it's bridge between the corners, a nice dark line. A little line for the top. Okay, and now the angle there. So it actually comes across. And then it goes straight down pretty much. Like that. And a couple of little eyelashes. Now the iris. So I draw the bottom of the iris. A very light line. Then I can look back and see how's it looking. And a little indicator for the other one. That looks right to me. And then also looking at the white of the eye, is that shape between the corner of the eye and the iris, that white bit there. Does that leave enough and look the same as in the reference photo? Okay, now there's no light in the iris on the reference, but I'm an artist, so I can add a bit. So that's okay. To it quite thick. And the other one. Sometimes a little bit of a hint of the bottom eyelid is good. But I don't add too much because it's quite risky. You can make them look. Some people are really good at doing that, adding the whole bottom eyelid, but I like to do it in the shading. Because I tend to make them look a little bit owl like. I do that. No, I'm thinking, because I don't think with the hair, I might get out my other brush for the hair, because this is a very extra thin tip. Not confident in that, because I want to make it very dark. No 
I'll go into the hand as well. So the main, sort of looking at the main shapes, just the thumb, so line there, and a few lines in here. but I really find hands a struggle. That's why I do them so simple. And I've looked at lots of tutorials on YouTube and I think it, it doesn't always seem to work the same way. Maybe it has to be, you have to do it to your style. And I don't want to spend ages doing construction lines. Oh, that hand is way too big, isn't it? Okay. It's a bit interesting. I'll try and fix it. So I'm going to reduce the size of the thumb and then bring that in there, make it a bit darker. So I need that to be about there. I like this song. Alright, if I can get away with that. So I move the wrist across, move this line here, and when I shade it, I'll try and fix it up a bit. Okay, I'm going to use this, ooh, this um, black dye base pen. There was a lot of ink in it. on the paper. Because the, t the top is textured, it matches quite nicely. Give it a bit there and I'll smear it across. face. 
think I'm getting away with that thing I did earlier there. A little smudge. Okay, got my wash brush again. And a shadow under the eyebrow. It's a pretty important one under there. My wife just came in and said that the hair looks ridiculously dark. So I think I'm gonna have to add in a few white streaks. She's like my manager. Oh gee. Okay, so it was really dark. There, so, because I forgot it was the, the dye ink. So I have to be extra careful around the hair. Nice shadow on the back of the hand there. See the eye needs a bit more detail. Maybe a darker. on either side and I think a thicker eyelash sometimes the slightest little dark point in the corner of the mouth can change, mouth can change it or oh, you can see it's bled there a bit Hey, this is a Kirataki white brush pen. It's a bit like white out, has a little shaker inside. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, no. So I'll give it a bit of a squeeze off the page, so. I don't get all the blobs.
<laughs> not sure about this. out a bit. Okay, back to my pigment. And because his face is right next to the clothes, I'll outline the hair, the outline the face. So you can see it a bit more. I could put another white line to make it stick out even more. Good try, Danny. Just wiping a bit of a tip, it's very gluggy. when YouTubers make a lot of thumbnails, they do this sort of cut the person out against the background. Okay, now because these bits have dried a bit, I'll add a bit more shadow. Holborn watercolors and I can do that with this plain water brush pen so I've never done this before but see if this works so I'll get a start at the bottom and work my way into the middle just for a bit of background oh I have to remember that the hair is very very easily or bleeds really easily Should be 
a bit more intense in the middle. test. I want to add a bit of a really light shade of yellow to this dress. This is a bit like a fashion sketch. Supposed to be a lot of energy and flowing lines. Probably a bit more yellow than I was actually meaning to do it, but I think that's all right. So here's the final sketchbook page. Thanks to everyone who followed along, and I hope you feel this sketching practice is really helpful for improving your art and keeping you motivated. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.